Hello, everybody, and welcome back to more of the 2018 Canadian Senior Paper. We are on our fifth question, A5. And that's what we'll be taking a look at in this video. So if you haven't given it a try, I would, do, uh, I would certainly encourage you to take a look at this question. Feel free to pause the video if you want to. Uh, but what have we got? In the diagram, A, B, C, D, E, F is a regular hexagon with side length 2. So lots of little 2s I can add in here. Points E and F are on the x-axis. Points A, B, C, and D lie on a parabola. Ooh, interesting. What is the distance between the two x-intercepts, so these two zeros down here of the parabola? Okay. Now, the picture makes it look like the hexagons in the first quadrant uh, sitting along the x-axis, but it doesn't have to be. We just care about the distance between the zeros, and that doesn't change if we shift the whole thing left or right. So for symmetry's sake, because the parabola has a lot of symmetry and because the hexagon has a lot of symmetry, we could imagine that everything is just sort of moved over so that um, the, the axis of symmetry that divides the parabola is along the y-axis. It might make any equations we work with a little easier to do. And it's not going to change the distance, so uh, it's perfectly fair game to do that. So perhaps I'll draw my parabola first. That's a pretty awful parabola, but that's okay. Uh, I suppose we can do that, 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 and that. That's decent enough. If I need a better picture, that's fine. But remember, pictures are for you uh, to work out things. Oh, so we've got the sort of the center line going down here. We'll make that the, the y-axis. Okay. So what can we do with this? Well, we know that uh, the sides of the hexagon are 2. And this line here is dividing things in half. So each of these is now a 1. We've got a 2 here and a 2 here and 1s and 2s here. So, for example... Oh, I can't remember. Did they go clockwise or did they go counterclockwise? Clockwise, A is over here. B, C, D, E, F. So, for example, E is now, I can definitely say it's at 1, 0. F is at minus 1, 0. And, in fact, we can work out the coordinates for all of these uh, positions. So, C is going to be at 1 something. I'm not entirely sure what. B is going to be at minus 1 something. But it'll be the same height. Same with A and D, although I don't quite know their uh, x-coordinates, but we can work them out. Uh, remember, inside an equilateral hexagon or a regular hexagon, the internal angle is 120 degrees. That leaves me with a 60 degrees remaining. And so if I drop a perpendicular, I get a nice little 30, 60, 90 triangle. And if the hypotenuse is 2, that's going to force this length here to be a 1. And so now to get to A, we go over from F by 1. So we'll go minus 2. Similarly, D will be at 2 something. Okay, that's, that's the nice thing that the symmetry affords us here. Uh, but we'll also be going up by root 3. Okay. And if I were to cut in half here, this 120 degrees gets cut in half. I'll get a 60 degree here and a 30 here. So to go up from A to B, we go up by another root 3. So we'll put 2 root 3 here. And so a 2 root 3 there. Okay. Now, if I have a parabola, this parabola is facing down, uh, what could I do to, to sort of figure out the, the, X and, uh, the, the two x-intercepts? Because that's the real challenge. What are the x-intercepts? Well, I've got four points that are on the parabola, and I actually know the points. I've used the, the trigonometry, the, the knowledge about the regular hexagon to figure out these points. These points are on a parabola. might be a good idea to figure out what this parabola is. Okay. Now, I could, uh, I suppose we could put it in vertex form. Focus on this vertex here, which is at hk, but h is going to be zero because I've chosen to move everything so that the... Uh, y-axis is, is going right down the middle. 
if I hadn't chosen to do that, if I hadn't chosen to shift everything, uh, you know, D would be 2 plus H, whatever H I chose, and minus 2 would be, or A would be at minus 2 H, comma, root 3. So we just get a bunch of extra H's around here. So by shifting everything, we make our lives just a little bit simpler, and that's always nice. Okay, so uh, it's a downward-facing parabola. So I know A here will be negative. It'll be X minus H squared plus K. But of course, H is zero. So I'll get AX squared plus K. And what I can do now is I can start working out what this should be. So for example, I know that C is on this parabola. So two root three is going to be A one squared plus K. And I also know that D is on this parabola, so root 3, the y-coordinate, is going to be A, 2 squared, plus K. I'll get A plus K and 4A plus K. Now, if I double this second one, we might want to number our equations, especially if we're uh, writing things up nice and neat. Um, oh, actually, no, I, I don't need to double them up. I suppose I could do, I could just do 1 minus Two and that'll get that'll get rid of the case. So two root three minus root three is a root three. A minus four a is negative three a, and k minus k is nothing. And this allows me to then solve for a. A is root three over negative three, and that'll be negative one over root three. So now I know a. Can we work out k? Well, we should be able to. Uh, just plug it back into one. I know that 2 root 3 is going to be a, which is negative 1 over root 3, plus k. If I multiply everything by root 3, I'll get uh, 6 is equal to negative 1 plus root 3k. So if I add 1 to both sides, I'll get 7 is equal to root 3k. So k is 7 over root 3. So, and I might want to very clearly state this just in case I screw up any future calculations. My parabola is at minus 1 root 3 x squared plus 7 over root 3. Of course, it would be x minus h squared, whatever h you chose if you decided not to shift the parabola uh, over to the x-axis, and that's okay. Now, we're looking for roots of this. So uh, we'll just set 0 to the y-coordinate, so minus 1 over root 3, x squared plus 7 over root 3. It should be x is plus or minus root 7, I think. Yeah, x squared is 7, x is plus or minus root 7. So the roots are at... Minus root 7, 0, and root 7, 0. And did we want the roots, or what did we want? The distance between the, the x-intercepts. So we'll just go back. Distance between is 2 root 7. And there we go. Nice, neat, simple. Up next is going to be uh, a a6, and that's going to close out part A, and then we'll get into the written, uh, written questions for the paper. But I will see you for question uh, 6 in the next video. Until then, take care. Have a wonderful day.